Hello there and welcome, my name is Santi and in case you're new here I make videos about productivity and note taking, particularly of this app called Obsidian, which in my opinion is the best note taking app. In case you want to learn more and you want to learn how to use it properly, I have an online course about it. So yeah, check it out. By the way, this is my face. It's not that I didn't show it on camera because I am shy, but because I couldn't get my camera working. It took, it took me a couple of hours and I just gave up on it, but I still wanted to make this video. Either way, that's not the point. Check out my course in case you want to learn about Obsidian. And with that said, we're going to go into today's topic, which is Mine Forger. Now, personally, I'm super happy with my Obsidian setup, so I'm not looking into this app as a, you know, a potential replacement. If anything, there are parts of Notion uh, such as the tables that I'm trying to look for more open source, free alternatives. And this one is a great example. So that's why I'm looking into it. But of course, if like the idea is that I want to shine some light on these amazing tools that are meant to be open source and free so that if it resonates with you and this is the tool that you want to use, you feel free to do that because I think some people's brains work better with one tool. Some people's brains work better with other tools. So yeah, I just thought it'd be cool to, to review this, this app and see what you guys think. Uh, so with that said, let's gonna, we're going to take a look. So first off, these are going to be my first impressions on this app. I haven't downloaded it yet. However, I did check the first video that is at the bottom of this page that we're going to talk in a second. But right now, let's just see what it says. So thinking notebook and markdown editor. And if we scroll down here, we have some nice screenshots. We have more stuff in here, more information, all good stuff. This is actually the screenshot that really motivated me to test it, give it a try. Particularly because it seems to be working with nice tables and maybe some outlining solutions that I saw reading this. And, you know, one of the cool things that I think makes this awesome is that it's, it's open source, it's free. And it's really free, you know, like you can just tell that the creator of this really cares about making these things accessible to people like you and me. So I really appreciate that. So with that said, that's enough of an introduction. Uh, these, are, these are the videos that I checked. I watched them really quick. Nice videos to explain how the app works. At least a big picture idea of it. And yeah, so with that said, we're going to download it. I am going to go here to download. And what's really cool, you know, is that it seems to be closed platform, Windows, Linux, uh, Mac. I was going to test it on Linux, but apparently because I use Arch Linux, there were some issues with it. So right now I have a Mac that I also use. So I'm going to install it in Mac right now. Hopefully that also make it a little bit more accessible. So let's just see how it works. We go to Mac in here and then let's take a look. Okay. So here's a DMG right here. And we're going to click on that. Let's see where it takes us. And we are in this GitHub page. If we scroll down, here we go. Okay, so we got to check here for DMG. You know, like the, the process is not that intuitive, but it's also not that bad. So hopefully it's going to be simple enough. If we click on there, now that should be in our downloads in here. It's downloading right now. So let's give it a second. Cool. All right. So if we click on that, now we can just open it. And let's take a quick second. Let's give it a second for that to load. And here we go. Now I'm going to open a page in here where I have my apps. I'm just going to drop it there. That seems to work. Did it? Yeah. Okay. That works. It made a sound on my headphones <laughs> and let's test it out. I'm using Alfred in here and let's look for mine for their... Cool. So let's open that. It works. Seems to be installed correctly. And now let's open it. All right. So this is a classic thing is telling me that is not from the app store. Yeah. You shouldn't worry about this. Honestly, just click open. And now it should be there. Cool. Here we are. All right. So let's take a quick look at it. Uh, can I zoom into it? Let me check. Give me a second. All right. So there doesn't seem to be a quick way to just zoom in to make things bigger. So I'm going to just have to, you know, do this classic manual zoom in. So in here we got installation. We got the basics. We got some documentation, which seems great. And overall, you know, here are the settings. If we just take a quick look at them. We can click on it and we got the application uh, start to view. All right. This is going to be interesting. And of course, this is essential dark mode, which is perfect. That's exactly what I need. And yeah, let's take a quick look at, uh, on what else we can do in here. So, okay. So it seems like clicking around. I just started clicking around this. You can open the notes. Now, first thing I noticed, of course, being a, a huge fan of dark mode is that this is, yeah, okay, viewer. 
So yeah, apparently we can make it dark. Let's take let's check that out. Cool, it works. Okay, that is kind of essential for me. I really I really hate looking at a white screen, so that is pretty nice. And yeah, so as we can see here, just like some installation instructions, a lot of Linuxy stuff. Of course, this does look like a very Linux app, to be honest. Doesn't look as modern as some other applications. But to be honest, if it works and because it's really fast, I mean, I really like the fact that it's fast, really, really fast. Um, you know, I'm willing to compromise on some aesthetics, but again, it's not it's not bad looking. The only thing I'm having some issue with is like figuring out, is that the best way to close that? Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I didn't know what was the best way to close that. Now, if we edit in here, it seems that we can, of course, make some changes. And we can see it on the left that whatever right in here is gonna be reflected on the left. And there should be some markdown. I don't know why I'm writing that, but either way, can I zoom into it? That's, that's one thing I'm having problems with. I'm just testing a few shortcuts and there doesn't seem to be a quick way to zoom in. I'm sure there is, it's just that I haven't found it yet. Okay, now let me take a quick look at the settings because if there is something like vein mode, then that would make my life so much better. Let's take a look. All right, I think I found it. This is gonna be great. So if we go to settings in here, you know, right in here, zoop, nice sound effects. And we go to viewer editor in here. So we're in editor, editor key bindings. Perfect, this is what I need. Vim, that is perfect. If you don't know what Vim is, it's just a way in which you can use every key in the keyboard as a shortcut. It's kind of advanced, kind of tricky. I'm working on making making uh, resources for learning Vim, but yeah, I mean, I just, if honestly, these days, if an application doesn't have Vim, I practically don't use it. <laughs> that is how much I love Vim either way. So if we go to edit, now let's take a look if Vim works. Oh, 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 oh. Doesn't seem to be working. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I need to reload the app. Okay, let me pause it and reload the whole thing. All right, yeah, I mean, that was a bit disappointing. I reloaded the whole thing. Vim mode is not working yet. I'm sure I'll figure it out, but yeah, kind of annoying that I couldn't activate it, but I still stick by my words. I love Vim. Without Vim, I do struggle to, to just navigate around my files quickly and just edit and write text quickly. Either way, okay, what else can we do in here? Let's see what else we got. So we got Navigator Notebook. Okay, let's see, Notebook. Let's just name it Notebook, that's fine. Uh, let's just create that. Where does it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? All right, that's a bit confusing, but we're gonna try to take a look at file, new, Mindforger repository. Let's take a look. Okay, this is nice. It tells me where we want to locate things. So I'm just gonna locate it in my main folder and that's fine, let's call it that. Including fine, yeah, okay, let's do that, let's see already exist. Okay, maybe I need to name it something else. All right, that's a bit confusing. So new main find my repository, let's call it two. That should work. New. Okay, that works. Nice. Ah, okay. So <laughs> it seems like, all right. Yeah, that was definitely my bad. It seems like once you create, once you install this app, it already comes with these things. Installation basics. Okay. How do I go back? I'm just kind of struggling navigating back. Let's take a look. Okay, I found my way around going back. So say I open here. Now if I click on this one, I can go back to this, right? If I can go there, then I click back. So yeah, apparently what the rep, rep, repository that we create in here is what is already located in our files. So if we take a quick look at our files. Yeah, okay, if we take a look at our files, this is the first one it created automatically. So it apparently, this one is empty. Let's take a look, memory. Okay, so there's some stuff in here, markdown files and images. And all we did was creating a second one that I called number two, that was completely unnecessary. I thought it would create one that was completely blank, but apparently it comes with those initial files. All right, so we're back here and let's say, I'm just gonna open anything just to take a look. And okay, so we got edit, right? That's what I already understand. And here you can write something and you can either save it or you can cancel it, right? So if you save it, it goes there and it is there and you can edit it back. Now, if you want to go back to the main view, you can click in there and there's apparently some other views. This is like a nice matrix situation. 
and here we have one where we can see everything so uh, yeah presumably these are tags yes correct it does say tags in there and here we have recent notes okay here's a nice little intro okay thinking notes on markdown editor like we saw in the in the website and here we have a read this first i mean i would definitely <laughs> it would definitely be useful for me to read things properly read the documentation because these are really my first impressions i watched the video briefly but yeah, I didn't practice on things and that's why I'm looking a bit dumb, just <laughs> moving around a bit aimlessly. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I'm just going to click some buttons around like, okay, this looks nice. Apparently, ooh, nice. Okay, this is cool. So we got our graph, right? And apparently we can click on it and it takes us to different places. Okay, I actually like the fact that, you know, I like the fact that you can really see. Can I go back? I need to cancel this. Uh, this card changes, that's fine. Yeah, I do like the fact that every every one of these is easy to move and that every single one of them, or you can easily read the text opposed to other applications where it's kind of hard to read the text unless you hover over it. So that is quite nice. And yeah, I mean, apparently it opens it once you click on it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I mean, tons of stuff around here. All right, so yeah, I mean, that's that's what I can see right now. It's definitely not as intuitive as I was expecting it to be. I did struggle like figuring things out around. Of course, again, these are my first impressions and I definitely feel a bit dumb about not knowing how to navigate through things. And <laughs> yeah, so you, you're gonna have to forgive me for how much of a noob I look right now. If you're used to this application, you'd probably be shouting at me, be like, no, this is how you do it. But either way, so anyway, my first impressions, not super intuitive, but it does look like it has like some really cool functionality, some really cool things going on. And more than anything, I really appreciate the fact that it's open source and free. Of course, that is a huge selling point. People love free stuff. And also it's good to have access to your notes, to have them locally stored. So I'm excited for that. I'm going to be looking further into this app. And if, you, if you're really interested, let me know. I can definitely do a follow-up once I know what I'm doing because I definitely don't know <laughs> how to use this app yet. And like I said at the beginning, if anything, it looks like it could potentially replace some of the functionality of what I use Notion tables for or databases. I think it might have the potential to, to achieve certain things. Hopefully, it's as powerful as I think it is. It does seem to have some out, nice outlining experience and just being able to manipulate text quickly. And yeah, like I said in the beginning, I don't think I'll be moving away from my Obsidian setup because I really enjoy it. Ignore that, okay. <laughs> I really enjoy Obsidian. I think it's super easy to use, uh, super powerful. It's definitely a lot quicker in some things, a bit more responsive. So yeah, I don't want to look down on Mindforger. I think it's, it's a nice project. I'm definitely gonna be exploring it, but will I move to it? I don't know. I'll definitely keep my Obsidian nodes in Obsidian for now, but at least for the Notion tables that I want to move into something that is more table friendly, Mindforger could be a solution for that. So I'll keep you updated if you're interested to know more news about it. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more content about Mindforger or if you've tried it, maybe if you've tried it and you have some pro tips for me, please let me know because I'd definitely love to learn more. I'm definitely going to read the documentation and learn to use it a bit better. Uh, but again, these are my first impressions and I'm experimenting with this format. So let me know if there are any, uh, any other applications that you might want me to use or test. I definitely enjoy looking at projects like this and particularly when you get to own your notes, I think that's a huge advantage and that's a big reason why I would like to try an app. So again, if you have suggestions, let me know. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this, this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.